morning, everybody. Today is the 12th of May. And it is Fibromyalgia Awareness Day here in the UK. So we've got a couple of models that are starting off this um, video today. Um, <laughs> bless them, aren't they just the cutest? Uh, so they're wearing purple, lilac, and I know you can't see it very well, I'll show you a bit afterwards. But the blanket that they're lying on has a big butterfly on it. And Emma Jane, on the right, is holding a butterfly. So the butterfly is the symbol for fibromyalgia. And purple is the colour for fibromyalgia. Um, it's also the colour for lupus um, as well, which is on the 10th of May, Lupus Awareness Day. So we would like a shout out to our fellow lupus sufferers. So I have fibromyalgia. I do have a bit more of a playlist on this. Um, uh, my fibromyalgia journey started in 1996, uh, when my el youngest daughter was one. She was a year old. And it took till 2000 till I was probably diagnosed with fibromyalgia because it is really, really difficult to, um, to diagnose because there are so many different symptoms. And a lot of those symptoms, they come with other things. But not only that, I was a mother of three young children. Um, so in 1996, I had a one-year-old, a two-year-old and an eight-year-old. I was going to university doing my teaching degree and um, that was an hour's drive every day for four days a week. Um, I was also working in um, a grocery store uh, on the weekends and trying to pick up some nights if I could for money, extra money. Um, the symptoms, there are all sorts of symptoms. There's um, uh, when you go to sleep at night, it's unrefreshed. So when you get up in the morning, you don't feel like you've had a good night's sleep. This goes on and on and on. There are headaches. So ordinary type of headache, and migraines, um, irritable bowel syndrome. Um, there is a thing called um, fibro fog, which is a lack of uh, like conscience concentration. Um, you forget your words, so it's all cognitive. Um, along with like you get your words mixed up, you get your memory isn't working um, as efficiently. You can be clumsy, you can be dizzy. I get both of these, and they weren't um, so known back then, but they've been added to the symptoms and. Um, Sensitivity to changes in the weather. I used to really, really love the sun and I would lie in the sun and the heat all day long. But now, um, probably in the last few years, I can't do the heat anymore. So no more sunny holidays for me. Excuse all the background. This is real life. I can see my happiness homemade sign is upside down. You've got Woody lying on the couch as well. <laughs> this is real life. This is my life. This is not... Um, Pinterest friendly or, or Instagram friendly or anything like that. This is just part of my real life. Uh, the, what started with me in 1996 was pain, absolute pain and just crazy tired. So pain in my elbows, pain in my back, pain in the tops of my legs. Um, the tops of the legs are the muscles that you're in your back. They're the um, largest muscles in your body. So it makes complete and complete sense to me that they were the first to really hurt and um things like I've never been very had very strong legs I've um, always found cycling really really difficult and um it could be that I've had fibromyalgia for my life and um you know things like particularly back in 19 the 1990s it was really unheard of unknown um not a lot of research into it um, they tested me for multiple cirrhosis. They did at one point think I had ME, but mine was more about the pain. Um, and yes, I was tired, but you know, I had three young children, so a tired 
spell is to be expected. Uh, nobody really knows what causes fibromyalgia. There's no, it seems to be like no, um, no one cause. There are quite a few different ideas, and that is that there's some sort of trauma to the body which creates this huge um, physiological um, reaction to the trauma. Um, like it used to be like a car crash because that was pretty traumatic on your body. Um, an emotional event. Uh, lots and lots of research has been done into the effects of uh, early child abuse and to fibromyalgia, correlating with fibromyalgia later in your life. That's definitely more on how I feel it. I definitely think it's got a psychological, for me, it's got a psychological base and um, which affects the physiological. So um, if my... Um, complex PTSD plays up, um, you know, if something triggers that, the response usually is quite um, severe. So I have that and then my responses are more like fibromyalgia. So it's really hard to, um, to diagnose because there could be all sorts of things going on in your body. Um, the reason that they give you um, um, antidepressant medication is because their research has shown that there is a, a lack of serotonin. So there's a deficiency in the serotonin um, in your central nervous system. Now, your central nervous system does work all of your body. So you really need to have all those sorts of things regulated. And also they found that the pain... The pain um, transmitters in your spinal fluid. Um, so if you feel pain, it's felt in your central nervous system and then it goes to your brain and then you, you have your reaction to that. That's why if you stub your toe, it takes a little while for it to get to your brain and then you to realize that you've stubbed your toe. It doesn't happen straight away. Um, but that um, that neurotransmitter, that, that protein, that neuroprotein, um, that, that, that carries these, um, pain signals, they, um, they have like a three times increased, um, so if you, if you have a pain, it will be increased three times as much by this neurotransmitter. So when it gets to your brain, um, for somebody else who's stubbed that, just stubbed their toe, for you, with fibromyalgia, it's going to affect you three times as much. The pain is going to be three times as worse. That is why some people don't understand, like, you could have someone just touch your leg and it could be really, poke you on the leg and it could be really painful. Like, sometimes Grumpy will, like, say, oi, right, miss? And he'll poke my leg and I'll be like, ah! <laughs> and he's like, whoa, you're so dramatic. And actually, it's not dramatic. That pain is like really heightened that the transmitter has really heightened that pain for me. So it's, um, it's, it can be, it can be funny and it's about trying to live with it really and finding out what works for you. <clears throat> um, there are all, all sorts of, um, pain relief. So you take, there's lots of painkillers that they give you, um, Try to have like lots of sleep, try to get lots of sleep, lots of relaxation. It doesn't help if you are working. I was working up until um, eight years ago. Uh, no, 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 six, maybe six years ago. I was working, teaching up until six years ago. And then um, I had a nervous breakdown because other things happened in my life and I just couldn't work anymore. And um, so things that help me are just this, trying to relax, finding things that I do to relax. And so um, you're looking at my Reborns. I'm just going to switch off and start again. So I do have to switch off and start again because um, of how I uh, of, uh, because of how I upload, um, use the, an app to upload. Um, so the things that, yeah, that work for me is trying to find something that helps you to relax and helps you to sleep and um, being aware of your pain and, and um, it's not giving in to have a rest and, and relax. It's not giving in to have a day in bed. It's not giving in to give yourself that self-care. So as I said, you're looking at my rebounds and they give me huge um, support. Um, they don't actually give me support, 
but they help me, they distract me, they give me something else to think about, um, and they, I have them for other reasons, but for fibromyalgia, they just help. And also when I take them out, I do take a push chair because that really helps me walk. I have great balance problems um, sometimes and grip problems. And it really does help me balance pushing a push chair. I could push a Zimmer frame and I've tried, but I haven't really found one that works as well as a push chair for me. And I do use a push chair around the house on when I'm particularly having what's called a fibro flare. A flare is an intense time um, that you're feeling the symptoms of fibromyalgia. Other thing I used to love doing was um, aquatherapy. So I did have a hot tub in our old property. I did have a hot tub, but unfortunately, then I got psoriasis. So the hot tub, being in a hot tub was not allowing my skin to dry out properly. And my psoriasis, my skin never got dry. So my psoriasis was awful. So I haven't been able to bring the hot tub to this new property. But um, saunas and jacuzzis and hot, yeah, hot baths and things like that, they are really relaxing on the muscles. That's why a lot of people who don't even have fibromyalgia are like, oh, I'm just going to have a bath. I'm going to go and relax in the bath. So there we go. Yeah, hydrotherapy. Um, I've also used a TENS machine. I do have a TENS machine um, next to my bed. Particularly use that when my back is bad and there's nothing I can do about it. But then with a TENS machine, you need somebody to help you attach that um, onto your back. <laughs> so that's not always good. I carry heat pads with me wherever I go. Um, and I just ask friends and family just to add a heat pad um, if I can't manage it um, at the time. So they do say um, also light, gentle exercise. So which is really difficult if you've got fibromyalgia because you don't want to exercise at all because <laughs> it just gives you uh, stress on your body. Um, one thing that I found is walking. Just walking just helps and never under overdo it. It's kind of like um, I, you can have therapy as well. Um, I did have a little bit of therapy, um, physiotherapy, and she was the lady was saying to me, the nurse, um, it's like adding adding money to your into a savings account. What you're doing is trying to add your energy into a savings account for when you need it. So if you know you've got something coming up it, on the weekend, and if this is me, this is me. If I know something's coming up on the weekend, I will definitely have to rest all day Friday, and I know I'll have to rest the day after whatever events happened. But then other things can happen, like last week, um, I went shopping. I wasn't feeling 100%, but I did to go shopping and I had a, a, a shopping list for different stores. And I only go out once a week because of the pandemic anyway, um, and fibro really, but the pandemic more so. And um, so my shopping list meant I had needed to go into a few stores. And uh, when I got home, I was absolutely shattered. But I was like, no, I'm going to unpack my plants because they'll die in the van in the heat. So I unpacked my plants and then I was like, oh, I need to get the stuff out for my plants, you know, ready to pop them and things like that. So I got all of that out. I dragged stuff out of our storage area and uh, oh, it was just, I ended up having to go to bed. Sunday we had family around, which is okay. My family have grown up with me with this, so that's okay, my daughters. Uh, so they were very, very helpful. And then Monday, I just spent the whole day in bed. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, I basically didn't do anything. Um, much at all last week. I think I had to go out one day to put in my prescription in the doctor's and that was all I could manage was just to do that and come home. I didn't go anywhere else. So you do have to give yourself grace and give yourself those days and you are not, you are not being lazy by allowing yourself to have that. Um, I'll take you a closer look at my little girls because I do have a reborn doll family that follow me on this channel and I could not be surviving without my reborn doll family. My videos are my um, are my hobby. If you want to see more videos of my dolls, then you can just click on any of the playlists. Um, and I do have, like I say, a, a playlist dedicated to fibro. If you've got any other tips or if you've got found anything that helps you, I haven't found anything to do with food that's affected me. Um, so, but some people I know, if you have found anything else that can help you, please make those, please add those comments.
um, below because it does help each and every one of us to get through this together. And it's getting through this one day at a time, but not one day at a time. We need to try and live. So it's trying to live with it, not letting it live, not letting it rule us, but just living with it. So in order to live with it, you have to understand it. You have to understand yourself and don't try and compare yourself to somebody else. I have um, done that before because people with fibro and chronic fatigue and maybe even lupus and other, other illnesses, we don't actually look like we're ill. So it can be, we can, um, can make assumptions about other people. And I have been guilty of that myself. Uh, and try not to compare yourself to other people because that's probably one of the worst things you can do. So I just thought I'd show you this lovely blanket that my friend got me, Sheena, got me this blanket in purple and you can see the butterfly on it. It is absolutely gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? I just absolutely love that. I do have other crochet blankets in purple and things and I have done other, used other Reborns um, for this, for these videos in the past. Um, we've had our butterfly for a very long time. It's a TY butterfly. That is our fibromyalgia butterfly. <laughs> That's mum's butterfly. And this is the lovely Emma Jane. She has on a lilac cardigan, hand knitted cardigan, and she has a white and lilac dress on, which is absolutely beautiful. It has got flowers and birds, and um, it doesn't have butterflies on it, on it, unfortunately, but never mind. She does have some white tights with butterflies on, but it's a bit warm here today, so I didn't want to put the tights on. I've just put um, white leggings on with her, and there's her little feet showing. Thank you very much, Emma Jane. This is um, the doll that I've had the longest. This is Annabelle Daisy. She really is my therapy doll. I have therapy every Tuesday for um, childhood issues. And um, I take Annabelle, well, I haven't, I haven't for the last year because we've had a lockdown um, situations and we haven't been able to meet. But um, so we've been doing Zoom meetings. But Annabelle is the reason that I found, um, my, my counsellor is the reason I found Reborns. They have been, for me, the best therapy um, they really help distract my mind, give me something else to focus on because all my children are grown up now. Uh, my eldest daughter is in her 30s and my other two children are in their later halves of their 20s. So they've grown up with a mama with fibro. And so Annabelle's got this lovely um, headband on with a butterfly in lilac. So I always felt like a really guilty mum because I was always tired in bed, apart from working. And I did feel you carry that guilt with you so much that you're not doing anything for your children. But we would always do fun. We would always be able to come in mum's bed and we'd do puzzles and we do reading and we do a bit of make-believe and stuff like that. And uh, she's got a little, Annabelle's got little lilac socks on with a little trim. She's got lilac dungarees, which are really cute. Also, um, we're still, we're at the final stages of renovations on our bungalow. If you're not a regular viewer, that's the noises you can hear. It's got this really cute frill around it. And I love this, the top with a frill. I know she's wearing pink, pink necklace. She wanted to. <laughs> So, um, yeah, there we go. I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, not enjoyed it. Um, I hope you found it helpful. It's not about enjoying fibromyalgia, is it? It's about finding it helpful. And um, I, I've been in this game a long time. Um, so please don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Do what you can when you can. Make sure, do lots of things to help yourself. Um, I use a multi-cooker. Um, a lot of people have asked me what this multi-cooker is. I'm going to show you in a sec. I make ahead freezer meals. So when I cook tea, 
I always try and do plus one for the freezer. I know bulk cooking is really fashionable at the moment. Um, I love bulk cooking because it helps me. Um, I'll show you uh, my multi-cooker. Oh. So we've moved to a bungalow as well because I struggle with the stairs um, now. So we've moved to a bungalow. Here is my multi -cooker. excuse my, that's my treaty alcohol. Apart from a bit of cider every now and again. That's been here since we moved. Um, here is my multi cooker. So people were asking me what it is. It's a Drew and Cole. I mean, you can get other makes. It just happened that I was going for something else into John Lewis. This was the only one they had that was small because it's got quite a small, it's got quite a small little, smaller pot. Um, but I can, it's also got a warming function. So it will stay warm for 24 hours. So if I did something in here like, um, like a stew, it would then stay warm for another 24 hours after that. And so we could have it the next day. And then when the 24 hours is up, you just press the button and it will be warm again. So um, I absolutely love it. You can do all sorts of things with it. Like, I don't know if it'll focus. Rice, saute. The reason I wanted this particular one is because it sautés or browns first. So you can put your meat on saute and brown in, in, the, in the thing in here rather than do it separately. And then you can carry on and change your menu. So you've got slow cooker, you've got the high cooker, you've got steam. I'm not a lover of the steam. I don't do pasta. Really, the functions I use are the saute, the slow cook, the high cook, the stew and the soup. Um, I have done bread in here once, but I found my bread maker is much better. Um, so I haven't really used any of the others except oh, I've used it DIY sometimes as well. But I live by this. And... <laughs> So when I, I do plan my shopping, um, so I do one by one, oh, do one for later. So I made, Russ wanted a corned beef pie, so I made another one. Um, fruit cake, I made a fruit cake, I froze some. What else, have we got anything else in here? Um, faggots, I just split the faggots up, they're not extra. Chopped ham, I cooked a load of ham, that's just chopped up, ready to go in a soup. Um, I don't think there's anything up here. Oh yes, there is. Haggis, I made lots of haggis and mash. So I always, always... These are cookie doughs. So I try and make a buy one now. So I try and make a um, make one. I always try and keep my freezer stocked up for the times when I know that I'm not going to be feeling well, because I do know that I'm not going to not going to get through a whole whole week, a whole month, let alone anything else. Not feeling um, feeling right. So um, well, what is right? Everybody's right is different, isn't it? I just know when I'm not feeling up to par. Um, my husband comes home about six o'clock at night, and at that time of night, I'm ready to go back to bed, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, I don't. We try and have tea together. That's the one thing we try to do, is make sure we have tea together. Um, so, yeah, try and do the things that make life easy for you. It is hard. It is so hard, and it is so hard if you've got children as well. I mean, I look back at my life... Um, with the fibro and having my children and working as a teacher and I just wonder how I ever did it but you know we are strong so we do it I was the main provider for the house um I was married I had a previous husband but I was the main provider and um it was hard it was hard just don't beat yourself up. It is hard. And I always talk to my children. My children have known about this. I don't know. Some people keep things from their children, don't they? But I'm a believer of um, talking about things like this and letting your children know. Um, one of the things with fibro is also that it can run in family. So I don't know my birth mother. Um, so that's not good um, because you don't kind of like know the history. 
Um, and my eldest daughter um, wasn't feeling good last year, but and I was really worried that she was going to get fibro because she is a nurse. And I was really worried that she's going to get fibro, but it's not. It wasn't. She had loads of checks, loads of um, ultrasounds and, and x-rays and stuff like that. So she just has really tr real trouble with her wrists. Um, so, yeah, I just... Uh, I do worry about that and you constantly do anyway you worry about your family but um anyway to all my fellow fibro sufferer, sufferers out there we are strong we really are strong um we do this every day we fight through the pain every day it's so hard living with pain um just before the pandemic last year I was talking to my doctor about having a change of medication, trying a different medication now, because I've been on the same regime since 2000 and um, was starting to feel the pain a lot more, um, hence the bungalow move. And, um, and then we had lockdown and everything stopped. And now it's really, really hard to get an appointment with, my, with your doctor. I've managed to have my thyroid um, consultant has kept on because before the lockdown I was having um, consultations with my thyroid doctor um, some of them were over the telephone so we were she'd already started that thing so we were able to keep that up but GPs it's really really hard to see your GP um, anyway so we're just powering on like we do and that's what we do but you've got to find joy because there's no point saying like oh we're just going to get through this today we're just going to get through this today because that sounds like a struggle in your head well, i just get through today and then you just get up the next day and you think the same and it's just like no 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 got to find some joy got to find some joy in the day so um that's saturday when i like not a Saturday, just gone the Saturday before, so about 10 days ago. And I bought a load of plants on my day when I went shopping. Um, one day last week, I just went outside for half an hour and I just got my hands in the soil and I repotted some and I was thinking of where I'm going to put them around my garden. And that made me feel good. That made me feel like I'd accomplished something. So when my husband came home, I was like, come look at the garden, look, look what I've done. <laughs> I've actually done something. And so... It's those little things that really boosted me. That really did boost me. So it is it's trying to find something that you can be joyful about. Um, I do a lot of things. like I do colouring. I do a lot of um, crafting, but my crafting stuff is all packed while my um, garden cottage is being um, made, built. So that those things are still packed. But I do like sewing. I do like making cards and then I just send them off to friends and stuff like that. I don't make them to sell them. I, I've done that once, but that's not me. It's more about sending people just a little hello in the post. Um, it's just kind of like some days, yeah, you don't feel like doing anything. That doesn't mean you're not finding joy because you could just look outside and appreciate, appreciate something outside or look at your, Look at something you've got in your house and love it, like your wallpaper, something like that. You know, I'm really glad I chose that wallpaper. I love wallpaper. We don't have any wallpaper in this house. Anyway, I think I've waffled on long enough. I'm always a waffler. Um, lots of love to all my fellow chronic illness sufferers because there are so many other things. I also have chronic fatigue, which does come with fibro, which is ME. Um, so... It does come with fibro and I hate it. I hate the tiredness. I think the pain I can usually manage and I usually can distract myself from that. But the tiredness is the thing that gets me the most. It really does because it just robs you of the day because all you need, to, all you can do is just maybe lie in bed or lie on the sofa. But I know that that will only last a few days. And the flare, the fibro flares might last, I don't know, one week, two weeks, but they will be gone and I will have got through it again. And, um, and yeah, it's hard sometimes. Why do I have to keep going through this? You know, you can sit out and get through it. Why am I going through it? I'm too tired to go for it. But we do. And everybody has some sort of cross to bear. 
and I don't think I'm anything special. I just have a few extra things, <laughs> like most of us. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, today is Fibromyalgia Awareness Day, and um, so a big shout out and lots of love, gentle hugs to all my fellow fibro sufferers. Bye.